to a new no-code tutorial for no-code HQ and today we're going to look at a basic uh, bubble functionality which is going to be setting um, states and we're going to look at this functionality by building um, a mobile web app within bubble so this might be really useful if you want to build um, a mobile app using bubble uh, where you have a single page basically with um, a, a app bar at the bottom or a tab bar at the bottom of your application uh, and users can switch between basically pages within your app by just clicking on an individual icon within the tab bar but actually what's happening under hood we're not changing an actual page within bubble it's all just within one page but we're actually changing the state of a certain element which will display or hide certain groups but um, I'm going to show you all of that just in a second so what you will do need to do is just um, create a new app um, once you click on create a new app this pop-up will be shown and we can give our app a name so I'm just gonna call it um, a mobile app tutorial state okay doesn't matter what you call it and I'm gonna click on create a new app and we will be brought into the application editor and as always the uh, bubble application assistant will be open so let's give it a few seconds so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to click start with a blank page and I'm going to close the assistant and we're going to go right ahead and start editing our application. So what you want to do, first of all, you want to double click on the index page. Currently we're on the index page, which is our main and starting page. And what you want to do, you want to go to preset page width and you want to change the width to mobile. Okay, so Bubble will automatically by default say, okay, the width of a mobile device is 380. This doesn't mean that it won't work on a um, screen with a higher width it will just mean you're working with a width of 380 here and elements will either basically be stretched out or uh, compressed or the, basically the screen will be stretched out or compressed according to the actual screen size but 380 is a good uh, width to work with because um, most phones nowadays actually have a larger screen width than 380 I believe so um, yeah uh, what I'm also going to do, actually, I'm just going to change the background style um, to a flat color, which is slightly grayish, just so to add a contrast, okay? And um, let's uh, close that. What you can do is you can check this box, this page um, is a native app, okay? Um, actually, it doesn't really make a difference uh, if you check this box or not. Um, I think Bubble is working on some features for that, but for now we're just going to leave that checked. So let's jump, jump straight ahead. And uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just uh, take the screen here and I'm going to decrease the width. We're not going to need such a um, big screen, okay? Great. And, and what we're going to do now, we're going to add a floating group. And so you want to go to the elements here, search for floating group, and this will represent our tab bar. So let's drag that here on the bottom. Let's adjust that, okay? like this great and let's also put the screen like this and let's double click on that let's call this our tab bar okay and this floating group should have a style it should have a background style with flat color which should be white okay so we have our tab bar here on the bottom let's also add a nice shadow so there's kind of a contrast between the background and the tab bar itself okay you can define how the shadow should look um, great let's also make this a bit bigger um, also we want to say okay this should float relative to the bottom, okay? And um, if we just take a quick preview, this will mean uh, our floating group, our tab bar, will always be basically stick to the bottom and will seem like a tab bar in real life. So currently, as you can see, okay, um, my screen is a desktop size, but if I just go to inspect, no, not page source, sorry, inspect here, and if I change this to uh, mobile like this, uh, you can see, okay, the tab bar is stick to the bottom. No matter where we scroll, this always stays there, and which is exactly what we want. Okay, so let's close it again, go back, and we can now go ahead and start basically building our mobile app here. So I'm going to do that by clicking on this info button here. And within the element inspector, you can add a new custom state. And I'm going to click that. I'm going to give the state a name. This can be whatever you like. The state name actually doesn't make a difference. I'm just going to call it active uh, or just active, okay? The state type is going to be of type text, quite simple, as to create. And the default value is going to be our home tab, okay, and more of that later. So I'm just going to enter home here and close that. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to add another group here. I'm going to add that within the floating group, okay. Let's just center that. I'm also going to search for an icon here. So let's add an icon, drag that here, okay, position that on the outmost left of the group. 
and also center that vertically maybe. Let's center this group here as well. And let's change the icon to a home icon, okay? Let's make that a bit bigger maybe, like this. Great, let's copy this home icon, position that within the group as well. Uh, nope, okay, and let's center this icon. Let's say, for example, this is a list of things, whatever this you wanna be, whatever you wanna display here in your app. Let's make it a bit smaller. Um, and our last icon should be, let's put that out on the outmost as well. Let's just have for this, I don't know, um, user, like a profile kind of, okay? The default color of these uh, icons should all be um, black, okay? And we can now basically go ahead and start editing our basically tab menu, okay? So what we wanna do, we wanna say, okay, when this icon here, which is our home icon, is pressed, we wanna start at our workflow. And this workflow, we wanna set the state of an element, so element actions set state, the element we want to set the state of is our tab bar, the custom state's name is active, and the value should just be home. Okay, and that's basically it. The next thing we want to do, we want to do the same thing for the second icon. So if the list icon is pressed, again, we want to set the state of our tab bar. The custom state is called active. We want to change that to list. And at last, for this one, we want to start error workflow. We want to set the state of the tab bar, custom state active to uh, profile and that's basically it. Okay, so by clicking these individual icons users can change the state of this tab bar of this floating group Okay, and will be saved as the state within this field here basically the default state is home Let's add another conditional. Okay, let's, so let's go to the home icon. Let's say okay. Let's add a conditional when the tab bars active state is home this icon should have a different color. It should be, let's say, I don't know, blue like this or like this maybe, okay? I'm just gonna copy this color. So what happens now? This is gonna just show the user which state is basically active and that's common practice. So uh, if you're currently in the home tab, this icon will be blue. If you're currently in the list tab, this icon will be blue and the others will be black and so on. So we're gonna do the same thing for the other icons. So let's add a condition here. Um, and let's say again, okay, if the tab bars um, active state is list, the icon color should be again the same blue, I'm just going to paste that and same again if the tab bars active state is profile, the icon color should be the same blue again. Great. Uh, and that's basically it to be honest, uh, switching between the menus. Um, the last thing you just want to do now to basically show the different content is what you want to add a group. Okay, so let's add a group here. I'm going to just center that, okay? We're going to call this group home, this group home, and I'm going to actually remove the style. We don't want to have a background, okay? Um, and you're going to add one simple thing. You're going to say, okay, this element is not visible on page load, but I want to add a condition. I want to say, okay, when the tab bar's active state is home, this element should be visible. And we're just going to um, quickly go to our elements tree. We're going to hide the home thing, so uh, the home group, let's copy the home group, hide the initial one, paste it, so we just have the same group once again, so this one, we, this time we're gonna call it list, we're gonna change the conditional to when tab bars active is list, this is vision uh, visible, again, we're gonna copy this, hide this, paste this, center it, this is gonna be our profile group, and when tab bars active is profile, this element is visible. As you can see, we have these three individual groups, which just, which will be basically our three individual app screens. However, they're all on the same page. We're still on our index page. So URL-wise, nothing is changing and loading times will be extremely quick, basically, because a, a new page won't have to be loaded. This is all within one page, but we can switch between these pages uh, just by clicking um, on these icons. So just to show you that it works, I'm going to add a text here, um, which is going to say Home tab. Okay, and then you can, of course, display whatever you want to display within your application. That obviously depends on what you want to do. So let me just I have home tab here, and I don't know, maybe an image here. Um, so let's add an image here, search for free images, whatever, um, just to show you that this works. So let's add an image here. I'm going to center that. I'm actually going to apply a maximum width to all of these groups. So let's center that as well. Let's hide the home uh, group now, show the list group gonna just paste that this is gonna be our list tab let's also apply a max width to this group okay um, let's add a button just to showcase the difference like this 
and call this click me. And at last, let's go to the profile screen. And this should be um, my profile. Again, let's add a maximum width and also an icon maybe. And I don't know, profile maybe or user, something like that. Great, so let's go ahead and preview our application. Um, I'm gonna click on preview. And what I also wanna do, actually I wanna change this to um, a mobile view. Um, so if we go here, um, iPhone X, okay. Um, so first of all, um, small bug. Um, these don't fit inside our uh, floating groups. Let's just quickly go back and go to responsive here and uh, work with these settings. So let's actually say, uh, this should have a fixed width, okay, so it should always be the same, even though the, the width of the page is really high, this should still be a fixed width and centered, so let's just quickly refresh that here. And um, great, so I have to add the debug. So great, as you can see, um, we're currently on the iPhone X view here, and we're in the default state, which is our home tab, okay, and as you can see, we're in the Home tab, and we can now simply click on the List icon here. And as you can see, uh, without any loading times, we're automatically brought to the group, which is our List group, with the button here. And again, same thing for the Profile. I'm going to click on Profile, and we're within the Profile group. So really easily, you've created your own, basically, web app with an app bar on the bottom, and users can switch between these individual tabs. As you can see, it's quick, it's seamlessly, it's smooth and no new page has to be loaded, and it's the best practice to create um, a mobile web application within Bubble. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, I hope you learned something, and I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial with NoCoHQ.